As we saw with last week's video, the 10400F generally beats the Ryzen 3600X in 1080p gaming, although that's kind of to be expected at this point. The main question though is whether the 10400F is any good for streaming as well. And that's what we're going to find out in this video, but first make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So let me lay out the test plan. We're gaming at 1080p and streaming at 1080p too, and I asked you guys on a poll uh, what you'd like to see me test here, and the answer was a resounding yes to both streaming uh, to Twitch and a local recording as well, so that you can edit it later. Now on the settings we're using OBS the latest version and we were using the x264 encoder for both the stream and a separate version of the encoder for local recording. The stream to Twitch was streamed at 6,000 kilobits per second, again 1080p 30fps and the fast encoder preset and the local recording uh, was the OBS high quality preset. Games wise I went with Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Battlefield 5 as those are two games that are the most reliable and repeatable tests that I've been doing and uh, because they're fairly modern titles too, both DirectX 12. Now the games were running at sort of max ultra settings and and I was using an RX 5700 XT, just like the standard review. Uh, each of the tests were run three times at 100 and sec 180 second uh, runs each, so that we can then average the results later and get a, a fairly accurate picture of the performance. And wait, that's enough about the setup, let's see the numbers. So let's start off with Battlefield 5. Now, as you can expect, the 10400F does have a couple FPS lead over the 3600X, even while not streaming. What's important to note though, is that the 3600X loses 24 FPS while streaming and recording, whereas the 10400F only loses 12 FPS. Add to that the fact that its initial FPS was higher, it loses less, uh, significantly less percentage of its initial FPS to gaming uh, while streaming, which is kind of important to note. It's also the same story here, with almost no FPS loss between streaming and not streaming on the 10400F, whereas there is a fair, reasonably noticeable difference on the 3600X, although it's still not a massive margin. You're only going from 149 FPS to 135, which is still well over your you know, high refresh rate monitors uh, general usage. Of course, if you're using FreeSync, then you really won't notice the difference, but still, again, the i5 definitely wins here. So it seems like the 10400F really runs away with it. I mean, not only do you get a couple extra FPS at stock or not streaming, but you also get a significantly less amount of performance lost while streaming. So case closed, right? End of. We can end the video here and yeah, not, not quite. There's, there's a couple of reasons for that. Let's take a look at the frame time graphs for the 3600X. Here it is on screen, this is the Battlefield 5 run, and as you can see, it is a little bit all over the place. You've got a, a peak to 50 milliseconds, which is very slow for a frame time, but overall it's, it's fairly consistent. Let's take a look at the Intel one. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference. You can see a spike well over 70 milliseconds and a number of higher spikes across the board and a lot more inconsistency. Now, to be fair, they are still relatively similar with the Intel one only being moderately worse. It does mean a worse playing experience for you as the gamer, but there's also another important reason for that. So let's take a look at the local recordings for both chips, starting with the 3600X. This is our COD recording, uh, one of the runs, and as you can see, it's a pretty playable, pretty watchable experience. The quality is good, certainly nothing too much to complain about, right? Well, let's take a look at the Intel one. Yeah, that's, that's not fantastic. There, well, the quality is still good, there's just not enough frames on screen for this to be a watchable or uh, an enjoyable viewing experience. This was the same for, for Battlefield 5, although I would mention that even the 3600X did struggle a little bit in the high action moments in Battlefield 5, whereas the, the difference is that the 10400F, if you weren't standing perfectly still, you were dropping frames. Now, as with any test you see on YouTube, there are a million different factors that you could change 
if you say already have a 10400F or you're already planning on picking one up anyway and you're thinking you might want to stream in the future, like using your graphics cards NVENC or VCE encoder, um, of which by the way I'm interested in doing a video comparing the latest Navi versus uh, Turing card NVENC versus VCE encoders, so if you're interested in that make sure you subscribe. But Either way, you can do stuff like that to, to mitigate that if you already have one, but if you're planning on buying one of these two CPUs, it seems like the 3600X is a better option. Not only is it gonna be a better stream experience for both you in terms of your actual playing experience, but also your viewer's stream, you're also gonna get faster renders when you want to edit your clips later, which is always nice. Now, of course, the price comparator chip to the 10400F is the 3600 Non-X. Fortunately, I don't have one of those, but bear in mind that the 3600 Non-X has a couple of things going for it. Now one, it is about 5% slower than the 3600X, but that shouldn't translate into too much of a, a degraded performance experience for both you or your viewers. But more importantly, the 3600 is unlocked. You can overclock it. And in fact, most people who buy a 3600 plan on anyway, you know, buying it as a chip that they can then overclock to get 3600X levels of performance. With the 10 for 100, you can't do that. I mean, you can't even overclock your RAM on an H or B series board with the 10400F, which is a pretty big deal considering I was using 3600 megahertz RAM here for both chips. It was actually the, the same kit uh, with the XMP profile enabled, and that does give the 10400F a pretty big advantage over a, let's say, more real world situation if you're not planning on spending extra money on a Z490 board, which honestly just isn't recommended for this type of chip and generally speaking you would just go and buy you know a 10600 if you had that kind of money to spend anyway so if you just want to game at 1080p or maybe stream with the graphics card encoder then the 10400f might be a decent option depending on what ram speed you get and motherboard as well if, however, you're planning on doing, well, anything else like gaming and streaming with the X264 encoder and even editing your clips later, the Ryzen chips, the 3600 and the 3600X, generally are much better options. Now, with all of that said, those are my thoughts and I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. Which of these chips would you pick up for streaming and gaming? Do you care that the 10400F is a fairly limited chip by comparison or would you go with say a 3600 and overclock it? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Now, if you wanna check out either of the chips that I've been talking about in this video, there are gonna be links to them in the description down below. Those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon in store, we can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. There's also a load of other links in the description down below if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos. There's stuff like merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of the co-designs. Cool there's Patreon if you want to support me directly or there's also a load of other stuff like affiliate links for people like Overclock UK if you're buying from them. There's VPN options, there's Humble Bundle or there's also Streamlabs OBS if you want to start streaming. So a load of stuff down there you can check out. Of course, like I mentioned, do fit, hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And there's plenty of other videos over there you can watch too, including the 10400F review if you want to see how it performs stock and compared to an 8700K and a 3300X. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. But otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.